gamers today we are reinventing the meta the wheel the computer the joystick the keyboard i finally got a build to show you guys for abbasid the build orders for the remaining of the sales that i didn't do for season three have been delayed because uh, honestly i don't know what to make so i decided to try figure out a new style a new build something that i haven't seen anyone else do and we got it now, I have seen the Abbasid 222 before. It was like done like three times and it kind of failed miserably. But I'm going to explain why I think it's good right now. The reason why we call it the Beastie build uh, is because it's it's just a it's just a Twitch meme. Just trust me. Without uh, any further waiting for this amazing, huge meta changing build, let's get started. Now, I am the, the eyes where I'm the yellow Abbasid. So what is, how is this build different from the normal Abbasid one? In season one, I made a guide for you guys with the Abbasid build and then I updated it with season two. And then people asked me to make a new guide and Abbasid hasn't changed at all in terms of the build order, the opening. Abbasid always goes two, three, four TCs. And it was very hard to find any variant of it until today. So. I think this is honestly all memes aside I, I think this is the way Abbasid will be played from now on because of the wing uh, so when you upgrade when you age up with different wings I don't go for the culture wing second and I don't really see a point in it so I'm gonna explain why I do the 222 and also how you tech up and so on and so forth so let's get started so this is very similar to the English 222. You're going to start two on sheep, two on the closest wood, and then two on the goal. So if you've played English and you've done the 222 build, this basically starts out uh, exactly uh, the same way. So the next villager that comes up, we're going to build a mill. I'm going to put this because I know you guys always ask for this. Uh, and we're going to build a house, sorry, and then a mill because we need a wheelbarrow. And it works great with Abbasid. Wow, 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 it's very nice, very nice. Thank you, guys, for the raid. Hope you had a great stream. The way, the reason why this one works great is because with Abbasid you get the extra berries and you get the gathering bonus, so it's very nice. Plus, you get your wheelbarrow that you need anyway, so it's really, really good. You want to mine enough wood to uh, be able to make House of Wisdom and to get wheelbarrow. So I want 100 wood total here which is gonna be like 90 out of 150 left so you only need to mine 60 wood out of this and then you're you're done we're gonna add house of wisdom and the villager that builds house of wisdom will also be going to the gold so you're gonna have three on gold total and now you're gonna be rallying onto the fruit so we can get the age up now this is a game i just played by uh, uh with kazva who just raided me so this is abbasid versus abbasid mirror but it works out, uh, or it works against any sim. Like, this is not just Abbasid Mirror specific build. It's a standard build. It should work uh, against any sim. I've played it against four or five sims so far, and it worked out fine. The good thing is, um, Kazva is doing, like, the, uh, the, the standard Abbasid. So we'll see how they compare regarding timings and everything else. So, um, now we're going to just slowly age up. If you're playing against more aggressive sieves, what you can also do is, instead of sending the first two villagers to sheep, you can also instantly send them to build a mill. Uh, like if you're playing against French or English, because you want to get as many berries out as possible. So the thought about uh, behind this this build that, uh, that I kind of uh, thought of is, you're gaining wheelbarrow with Abbasid anyway, right? Like you're getting wheelbarrow as you're aging up. So why not just get it before then right you're gonna get a little bit of extra value because wheelbarrow allows you to basically have a little bit of extra resources because the villagers don't have to go back and forth and every time a villager is rallied from the moment the wheelbarrow finishes it's gonna arrive there 15 percent faster now this might you know this is not like 300 resource difference but it is a small difference now the reason why this wasn't as popular before is because the meta was extremely aggressive. Like, um, English was doing meta at arms every every single game, Mongol was tower rushing, um, 
Which, by the way, Mongol is still gonna tower rush, let's be honest. Um, and then you had civs like French that were just Omega, like being super, super aggressive. And throughout some changes that we've had in the game, I feel like this build is a little bit better. Now, I would probably advise you until you get comfortable with the build to avoid using it against Mongols because you are delaying your age up a little bit and you do want to fast age up against Mongol. But against other civs, you should be fine. So even though your age up is delayed against French, it doesn't matter because you can build barracks in Dark Age and you can build a spearman in Dark Age. So, yeah. Um, so right now, we got enough food to age up. We got a, even a little bit of extra food. Um, I had like 10 on food. You can get away with 9 on food and then 3 on gold. Once you have enough, you're going to keep... So for example... If you want to produce some units, whether that's horsemen or something else, you will keep six on food, okay? If you don't plan to produce any units, like no spearmen, nothing, you just want to get second TC, leave five on food. Uh, because it's always good to have a little bit of extra food just in case. And you want to make sure you can avoid fresh food stuffs as well when you uh, age up. Once that happens... Once you age up with economic wing, you're going to keep mining gold until you have 125 and this is for, for fresh foodstuffs uh, when you age up in the eco wing to make sure that your villages are cheaper. The rest of the villagers we're going to send to the uh, straggler trees to get enough wood so that we can uh, get a lumber camp. Now again another reason why Wilbur is good we already have it so this Kind of going back and forth not only do they have 50 percent 15 percent movement speed but they also carry more so they need to go back and forth less which is just um a little bit better now castle's wheelbarrow so just to compare the builds has just started um and you'll see we'll come to the same point regarding tcs i'll be slightly ahead but i'll explain why but his wheelbarrow is just starting so every worker like i said that goes is traveling slower and is getting uh, less efficiency. So, here we got the lumber camp. Like, I wouldn't advise to get this straggler tree because it's so far away, but these two, especially this one, is on the way. This one is already started, so might as well. We're gonna have eight uh, on wood, and then we're gonna get stone next because we want to get that second TC. Now, this is an Abbasid Mirror, so we're both going to go four TCs. Um, so this is not something you do every game. With Ab Whenever you play Abbasid against any Sith, what I would advise you to do is get second TC, no matter what. Like, maybe if you get Tower Rush, you defend, and then you get a second TC. But if the opponent is getting a second TC, you can get, like, four TCs. And I'm not joking. You can get... I would probably, again... Start with 3 TCs versus 2 and see how that feels. But whenever I see my opponent go 2 TCs, I go 4. Because they produce villagers for 100 food every rotation. Because every other civ's uh, villagers cost 50. Yours cost 25. So if you make 4 TCs, you're using the same amount of food to produce villagers. Except you're much, much further ahead. Uh, because your, your economy is just going through the roof. So... Um, the highest I went was 6 TCs, and I think that was when one time China went for 3 TC song, so I just went 6. I actually mined out my, my first stone, and I had to go to another one to get more resources. Um, so yeah, here's the Eco Wing. He already aged up. Now this is a difference, right? He can now make a production building, a harassment building, and he decided to go for stables. Because that fast age up allowed him to, to do that if he wanted to. Now, he does also get fresh foodstuffs a bit quicker, so technically he will save like uh, 50 or 75 food on villagers. But at this point, as I was saying, you're not really struggling for food, so this is not some, like something that's gonna save you insane amounts of resources. It's not that big of a deal, in my opinion. So he hasn't started mining stone yet. Uh, we would have started mining stone approximately around the same time. But because he is going for stables, his second TC will be delayed. And again, if this was like French or Roost that's making knights, I would just make a barracks now and, you know, just get a couple of spearmen out. And that's why we have five on food. 
because in case we need to make spearmen, you can. Uh, this game, even though I saw the stables, I'll see the stables in a second, I decided to just not make a barracks because I had an easy wall here, so I just decided to do that. Economic wing finishes, we're getting fresh foodstuffs, and another reason why I like the, the wheelbarrow first is if you're ever moving around to try and like run away from harassment, whether it's Dark Age or Feudal Age, you already have that going, so uh, you can quickly move your villagers, and if sometimes your resources, like you need to go from here to there, they're just gonna get there a tiny, tiny bit faster. Alright. So, we're both gathering stone, as you can see. We're both gathering, uh... oh, he went for the value camp, okay. And if you look now, even though I invested into the walls, so I had two villagers somewhat idle, I can still um, get a TC. And you can get this, by the way, a bit quicker. You can get it about 15 seconds faster, but because I had to make walls, uh, I had to spend like, you know, 60, 70 resources that could have been stone. And I pulled two villagers to make that to make sure I make it really quickly. So now. I'm not gonna go on the map to make a TC. I'm just gonna make a TC right here. Because if I, you're going for multiple TCs, and this is for any matchup, if you're going for multiple TCs, uh, you should always make your second TC, or first new TC, uh, close to your base, so that your opponent can't harass your stone anymore. So, I could have made it here, and I probably would have made it here if there was no horseman, but because there's horsemen, I just make a TC here. It's in range of my TC. He can't harass it. So his horsemen now are completely useless and they did not pay off at all. And because he went for this kind of early harassment, it's not gonna work out, obviously. Now I'm getting a faster TC. And my economy is just going strong at this point. So I'm gonna speed it up. So I'm rallying workers. One TC on this, one TC on this, because I am going for more TCs. If I was playing against French or English or something, and they are attacking me and they're not expanding, I would obviously stop making extra TCs, I would stop gathering stone. And from here on out, this TC would probably be uh, on the deer. And from here on out, I would rally one TC onto the food, one TC onto the wood, and then just kind of build up an army and defend from there. Now. This build is probably already known to you if you've played Abbasid before. It's very similar to the original build. You just get Wheelbarrow first and then you get your other stuff later. So why is this, you know, new and it's, you know, meta changing, you know, and all that? Because I'm gonna speed up a little bit. I'm gonna do times two. So now we both go for four TCs and again, this is irrelevant from here on up. I'm gonna explain the wing. So usually when you play Abbasid, if you play Abbasid on water, you go for uh, culture wing into military wing. That's the meta because on water you have fishing ships and you're not going for multiple TCs. So that makes sense, right? That's the kind of standard. If you play Mediterranean on Boulder Bay, you go culture wing into military wing. And this is something that's been a thing for a while. Now on land, since the release of the game, everyone has been going economic wing into culture wing so the idea behind it is you get cheaper villagers and then you get culture wing and then you get all the upgrades that's how the game was played but i thought about this recently uh, the meta with every sieve these days is the moment you can you always get economic upgrades because you probably guys know already but this upgrade used to be 7500 and uh was it 100 and 175? I think it was. Or 75 and 175. So these economic upgrades in Feudal were way more expensive. Cup 75, 125, are you sure? I thought it was more expensive than that. Pretty sure it was more expensive. Either way, these used to be a lot more expensive. And they were kind of like a... Yeah, it was 75, 175. Because it was adding up to 250. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... These, uh, and I don't know when this patch was, like four or five months ago. 
and these upgrades were very much a choice like you would only go double broadax if you're like staying in fuel for a long time and the meta and the normal gameplay with any sim was you get to castle and then you get tier one upgrades for economy because they were just too expensive to pay off but since the change that made them cheaper all the you know the, the mill upgrade the mining camp upgrade and the lumber camp upgrade now cost 50 resources and 100 and these days pretty much any every sieve the moment you can you get these so if you have a lot of wooden food you just get the eco upgrades because they pay off very quickly because they're cheaper the cheaper the upgrade is the faster it it takes to pay off right because you any upgrade that you look this one costs 150 resources so the faster you get 150 resources in wood with double broad axe, the upgrade paid off. And this made a huge difference since the patch because it went from 250 resources to 150, which is not quite half the time, but almost. So the point of all of this explaining is even with Abbasid, you're still getting these eco upgrades immediately, right? Like the moment you get your second TC, even against aggressive Sib, you will get these upgrades in feudal. You don't wait to castle. The game has become very feudal oriented. So very often, even if you're booming with Abbasid, you will have to make a blacksmith and you will have to make, you know, plus one ranged armor, plus one ranged attack, plus one melee attack, plus one um, melee armor, right? You also are getting wheelbarrow and you're also getting fresh foodstuffs. So if you're getting all these upgrades, then you gotta wonder, is culture wing really that worth it? And in my opinion, it's not. Because again, uh, before you would not get any upgrades with Abbasid. You, you would get fresh foodstuffs and wheelbarrow. Then you would get to castle, get the, um, I don't know what the upgrade is called. The first tier of culture wing that reduces your technology cost by 30%. And then you would get like blacksmith upgrades. You would get double broad axe, agriculture, uh, mining upgrade, whatever it's called. And then it makes sense because you're, you're basically waiting for the upgrades and then you're getting big value. But because you're getting all feudal upgrades these days, it has way less value than it used to. And another problem is if you get the culture wing, and you get the technologies cheaper 30%, that's great. But the second upgrade in the culture wing is the one that makes your keeps heal for, what was it, like two health every 1.5 seconds or something like that? Which is an okay upgrade, but you don't need it. Yeah, preservation of knowledge, yeah. So that up, that upgrade is, is good, but you don't need it, right? You need fresh foodstuffs, for example. And then the last upgrade in culture wing is uh, the ability for imams, which are their monk scholars, to wall along an individual unit like in Age of Empires 2. So my point is, all these upgrades are very irrelevant. It's like, they're not needed at all. And because uh, these days you get also later castle, so you still have a lot of resources to work with. You usually have already set up farms. So are you actually saving a lot of resources by getting your only castle technologies cheaper? And in my opinion, you don't. And I don't think that the meta will obviously will continue to be culture wing. So what do you do instead? I go for the military wing. Now, obviously there's been, you know, the, the popular meta has been to go for, uh, at high level games at least, to go for a lot of cavalry, a lot of camels, horsemen, and so on and so forth. Or just cavalry with any sieve the moment you reach castle and you can still do this but the reason why you can go military and you can you can do insane pushes is for two reasons if you go military as your uh, wing going into castle your units will get a an upgrade so I'm gonna speed this up right now there are three upgrades in military wing the first upgrade, the Imperial one, is your Camel Archers give plus two armor to your infantry, which is something you like. You need. It's very good. So you're going to get it. It's a very good upgrade. It's not optional. It's a very good upgrade. Second upgrade that you get in Castle is an upgrade that gives your Camel Riders plus three armor. So instead of going Knights with Abbasid, you can go Camel Riders and still harass with them. They are cheaper than Knights. They're not as good as Knights harassing, but they do have extra three armor. And 
you can get that plus three armor upgrade in castle. You usually get that in Imperial, but this time you get it in castle. And the most important upgrade that you get, I don't know why it keeps slowing down, is your infantry having extra health. Now this opens up a lot of possibilities for you. For example, you will see this game, I did not go for cavalry at all. I went extreme like boom with production buildings, five barracks, three archer ranges, and I just went mass infantry. And you'll see what happens. So I'm going military range right now. I'm getting my upgrades already. I got all my eco upgrades because remember, I'm not waiting for my culture wing now. So I can get these eco upgrades a lot earlier. And the value by getting them earlier will pay off for itself. So I'm getting my upgrades. And the moment military wing finishes, I get access to an upgrade that was always in Imperial. You get boot camp, which is 50 food, 125 gold, and increases the health of all infantry by 15%. Now, for those that don't maybe play Abbasid, there's also uh, an upgrade university that increases the damage of your infantry and health by 20%, and this stacks with it. So Abbasid infantry has the most health in the game. So this is, like I said, this is something you always, always got in Imperial because usually you get military wing in Imperial and that's when you get this upgrade, it's really good. But now, if you get this upgrade now, you will get extremely strong infantry and you can just do a line push into the enemy, no matter what civ they are. So even if they're going cavalry, you can completely stop that by forcing them to fight you. And if they fight you and your infantry has 15% more health obviously that's gonna be very good trade for you not to mention with abbasid your villagers are 25 food so you're just gonna have absurd amount of units very very quickly so we get the upgrade and as if you can see now our spearmen have plus 14 health crossbowmen have 20 uh, plus 20 health and the real question is let's say that that upgrade costed uh, preservation of knowledge right let's say we went culture wing let's say we saved 800 resources over time so you don't save 800 resources immediately 800 resources over time is it not more worth it to to spend 800 resources to get this upgrade instead that increases your infantry health by 15 percent because some games will last in castle for 30 minutes and if you have 15 percent more health on your infantry for 30 minutes it's going to pay off way, way more than Preservation of Knowledge. Now, Preservation of Knowledge does reduce the Imperial upgrades as well, uh, which is something I want to bring up, obviously. But you have way more potential with Abbasid to end games in Castle instead of dragging them out in Imperial. And if you look at it, you don't really... You're not really at a disadvantage if you go in Imperial and not have Preservation of Knowledge you're simply in line with the other sims. So it's not like they're gonna have Imperial upgrades and you won't. You're gonna have same upgrades as they do because they cost the same amount, except you will still have the extra health going into it. So I'm gonna speed this uh, uh, up right here. So now that I'm doing this push, I'm just making spearmen, crossbows, archers, whatever I can and doing the push. So now if you look, his units, his crossbows got 80 health, mine have 92. So now when we fight, even though I'm fighting with spearmen against men at arm crossbows, I'm still trading out better. Not to mention your men at arms will get 15% of 135 health. And if this was some kind of cavalry sit, you would absolutely demolish them because you just forced them to fight immediately. Now, this is the first time I've done this build in Abbasid Mirror. Look at this, Men at Arms with 178 health in, uh, in, in Castle. I'm getting all the other upgrades. And if I played against any other Sith, you have potential to end the game immediately, especially with the addition of Mangoes. Villagers getting killed. And... Yeah. So... If the game came to a point where we're both trading, that's a losing battle for him. And the re my point is the resources, and you can see he went culture wing. The resources he saved up through preservation of knowledge does not equal 
that big of a massive army lead because of he saved resources, then he would beat my army. Because technically, I have, you know, 52 army, but it's actually 52 army plus 15% on top of that. Because if you look at the army, it's like one big chunk of health. Uh, I technically have more units right now, ready to fight. So, I'm not gonna cast this game, this game goes on. I end up setting myself up for pretty good lead going into the late game. Uh, and the last wing that I'm getting, by the way, because if you're going into Imperial, there's no point in getting a uh, culture wing, because like I said, the upgrades that you have are reduced to 30%. Imam can now convert and keep seal. All those, especially in Imperial, I don't need at all. So, the age of the Imperial you can do with trade wing. And the reason why I really like this, and another reason why I like Military Wing Second, is because it allows you to go Trade Wing for your Imperial Age of. Now, the reason why you can't normally do this is because you go Eco Wing, then Culture Wing, and you have to go Military Wing for Imperial because those upgrades are insane. Like, you cannot skip on them. But now it opens up for a possibility for you to go Trade Wing going into Imperial, and even if you're shot off from the map, like, let's say your opponent is, you know, you can't get the gold or you can get certain resource you can just start trading a lot earlier and your trade becomes a lot a lot stronger as well at the same time usually in normal games if you go to normal uh wing uh order then you need to actually buy into another wing in order to unlock this so in the long run you're also saving 3.6k resources um, and not to mention, the military wing is something you're gonna get anyway. The culture wing, like I said, very underwhelming. So now that we got that, at any point, if I lose, like this game, I had gold on the map, so I didn't need to go trade early. But if I was cut off from the map at any point, I would just trade, start trading a lot earlier. Not sure when I go for these upgrades, because I want to show you guys the exact upgrades that are in. Oh wait, I can actually, and uh, I just need to switch. Okay. So here we go. These are the upgrades that I was talking about, so you guys can finally see. This one, this one, plus two health every one second. Which again, this one is a, is a decent upgrade, it's not bad, not needed. And then this one just sucks, to be honest. Um, this one is from Eco Wing, very good. This one is from Military Wing, very good. This is very good. And then the trade wing that you get now is traders and trade ships also return with a secondary resource. This resource is 25% of the gold value and is set at the market. So you can basically trade wood. So with Abbasid, you can actually go like 50 villagers on farms. Then you can go like 40, 30, 40, 50 traders on gold. Like they get gold and you put secondary resource on wood. So you don't need even to chop wood. Um, you get this one, which is plus five armor to trade and trade ships, whatever. And then the last one is obviously really good. Spice Roads increases the gold income from traders by 30%. And uh, yeah. So this is the this is the funny thing, right? Wait, what? Wait, Kazuo didn't go military wing? Oh, I guess he okay. Okay, so this is this is actually interesting. So Kazva didn't go a military wing at all. He went trade wing now. And he has a lot of units and they still don't have the 15% health up. So I want to show you something when my upgrades finish. So check this out. So obviously this is the 14 health. The university upgrade does not increase ranged health. So now my, where, does he have spearmen anywhere? No, he doesn't have any melee units. So now my spearmen got plus 20 health for a total of 150. And I don't think I have any men at arms. No, I got none, Sag. So now we're in full power. I wonder if he ever gets the military wing or no. 
Oh, by the way, Kazuba started trading earlier, that's why he went to trade wing, but it's interesting that he skipped uh, military. Maybe he wanted to go full cavalry, because he did transition, I think, to full cavalry uh, very, very soon. So maybe that's why, maybe that's the reason. Look at this. Shattered arm with 248 health. Let's go, baby. I mean, again, that's what you usually have with Abbasid in, in Imperialist. Uh, yeah. It's just nice to see. So, yeah. Uh, if you look, he got the upgrades, by the way, that I was talking about, and he was trading for food, secondary resource, so he gets gold and food. Um, But yeah, this game, uh, I'm not gonna cast the rest of it, I'm just gonna let it play out because I know sometimes people are like, Oh my god, what did you do? Look at Spearman, plus 49 half. Chads. Why did it say plus 20 earlier? It's kinda weird. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, Spice Rose also buffed, buffed the... Well, it doesn't buff the second resource, it's just 25% of your main resource, so... Yeah, thank you. Indirectly. So anyway, um, wait, why is it 49 on this one? Wait, wasn't it plus 50 on, on the Spearman here? Or am I crazy? Maybe it was 49, I'm crazy. So anyway, um, now, like I said, I, I'm not... I'm not 100% sure, but I'm 90% sure that this is a better way to play Abbasid. It gives Abbasid a lot more power in castle. It allows you to do stronger siege pushes. Uh, it was 49, okay. It allows you to do stronger siege pushes um, in castle by having stronger military. A stronger infantry with more health. Also your archers have more health. So if you're ever in these kinds of major situations where you're fighting infantry versus infantry, uh, you will be completely fine. If you enter any kind of siege battles or they have nest of bees or they have uh, mangonos, your army will survive now a lot more. And honestly, preservation of knowledge of any uh, culture wing as well. I feel like it's kind of wank. You know, it's kind of just not great. And I think the sole reason why it's not great is not that the upgrade itself sucks, it's because the meta in the game has changed to where you get a lot of your upgrades in feudal, so the efficiency and the, just the value of preservation of knowledge is just reduced. Did you mention Phalanx? Uh, well, I have it. No need to mention it. Uh, but yeah, that is it for this guy. Uh, I have a couple more sieves left to do. I think I have a Chinese guy left, which I know what I'm gonna do already, so that's coming soon. French, I honestly don't know what to make. French hasn't changed much, really. Um, Playstyle or build otherwise. And then I didn't do Roost either because I honestly have no clue what to make for Roost. I just, whenever I play Roost, I just do something new. So. No clue. I'll, uh, I'll figure it out or I won't. We'll see. Anyway, if you're watching this on YouTube, as always, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Haruman! Okay, let's, put, let's let, uh, let the game in. <laughs> Arch is the So yeah, this doesn't change much, uh, once again, this doesn't change much in Imperial, it changes a lot in, in Castle, and it gives you Trade Wing in Imp, which is nice. So anyway, with that being said, I can't talk when the units are yelling. Uh, with that being said, I want to thank you guys so much for watching, if you're watching on YouTube, especially once you try out the guide and playstyle, Twitch gamers, let's keep going!